Hello, hello, hello world. It's been a long while since I did a Facebook live video on serious issues, right? Not just uh, sports and play play and Gabi and stuff. No, this is serious. And um, it's what? International Day for the Elimination of All Forms of Violence Against Women. And um, yes, the launch of the 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. So it's all about what we can do to eliminate violence or, well, to help those who have found themselves in such um, violent situations. And um, as a founder of the, of the organization, Hope for the Abuse and the Battered, as a former victim, now survivor, very um, strong and um, proud woman, and um, yep, I decided to do this um, live video on Facebook because I know that a lot of my village people now, they watch me on Facebook. When I do videos on YouTube, not many people go there, but that's live. But so, um, I'm tired. I've been busy the whole day. I put the link to what I did today. I just came in and, um, oof, my goodness, there's no light. So I want to hurry. I want to go home. I think that the client is going to postpone or I will postpone. I'm really tired. So I want to introduce uh, my discussion. It's going to be hopefully a short one, like 20 minutes uh, or so, with this beautiful piece from a Kitty Jogba, Je Um I chose this song because, you know, before you end up in a violent situation, I'm sure you were first in love. So I don't know how people get into... No, I know because I got into one myself, but you know, you get into it with all the good intentions, maybe full of love, you know, that kind of love that is like, you cannot really explain the kind of love before you know it punches and going up and down. And some people even go as far as shooting, killing, stabbing. We have heard all kinds of stories this 2020 and I'm like, Hey, now, wow. So anyway, let me put the song. Um, I don't have the energy to stand up and dance, but I'm going to dance in my seat, right? Um, a kitty jogba salute four minutes twenty. I think time for us to really chill and champion the freak. Speaking for Jesus. Ah, Motabema, Monsieur Le Maire de Lise, Autriche, President Mavi, President Gary, Herman Sembag, Monsieur le Président Pierre-Bis Ngasenga. Marco Salo. Aha. Wow, 2019.
montre quelque chose. No be so wonderful thing. C'est toi que je veux. Il me make man cry. Il est jealous. Je n'ai pas filmé à Johnny. Ah wow. International Christian Bosis. The Barons de la Vicky. So that was a song now. So what is this um, 16 days of activism um, against gender-based violence? It's 16 days that the UN kind of set aside for people to orange the world. I'm wearing a purple t-shirt, but the color is to be orange, orange. Like paint the world orange. Let people pay attention and people like yeah this is a subtle color what is the message the message is don't violate don't beat don't abuse don't kick don't don't insult don't do all of those things now gender based because statistics has shown and uh, the bible says and culture says and tradition says and all the kind of things says the woman is the weaker sex the woman is supposed to keep quiet the woman is supposed to just yes massa the woman's body belongs to the man the woman the woman the woman the other day, I had Kamala Harris ask somebody if the person knows of any law that um, that imposes any restriction on how men can go about their bodies. And the man was biting his tongue. He could not think of any law. You know, when they talk of, I hear people say, eh, indecent dressing. It's women, eh? For men, if a man walks even bed chest, no problem. Ah, he's showing you his six packs. Ah, bravo. If a man they are even wearing be slim now, the whole thing, the whole body, six pack, four pack, everything, no problem. If he puts up for he starts splitting the hand, no problem. We earrings, tattoo, everything, no problem. But women, hey, I just saw a post how some people came after some woman who just got married recently, and one was saying, Hey, she's beautiful like that just because she has put on makeup. She's not as beautiful without makeup. And then they put her picture without makeup. And I'm like, why are we so after a particular gender? That is the female gender. Or like, what is it about women that threaten both other women and other men so much to the point where you look for all opportunities to violate them? Violate means that you disrespect, you insult, you beat, you do just anything. You, you say you want to... Um, put them to the right place. I will put you in your place. You know, I will put you in your place. My own used to talk to me and put his hand here like that. Je vais te mettre à ta place. Tu es mon bien. Je paye ta dot. Mang 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 mang. You know, stuff like that. Is that not violating? I never did this. I use my mouth, yes, but you know, it's like general tendency. Also, is that before a woman gets to that point, she also has to have been pushed. So when we talk of buttons which are pressed, to be as far as I'm concerned, and with all my research, a lot of times women are pushed to the wall before they retaliate. But men just take it as their right that women are the weaker sex, women are their property, women are, I don't know, their punching bags, women are, shut up! You know, like, what do you have to say? Who are you? See me, person, I go bring up a village. All that kind of thing. 
So it's like they look for ways to erode your confidence. They look for ways to demeaning, demean you. First of all, the first easiest way is to make her uh, disempower her. When you disempower her, I was talking with a girl. When was that? Oh my God, this girl. She has been suffering. She met this guy. She was walking. And the guy said, no, stop walking. And then the guy had won the lottery. And the guy said, as I go to America, I'm going to bring you over. And before going to America, he, he left her pregnant. So he got to America and she wasn't working. Yeah, the pregnancy and everything. I used to send some money for her upkeep. And all of a sudden, where well, America caught up with him. And so he was living the American dream. And so he, he, he ignored her. What was she supposed to do? He's there living his best life. She even hears that he's engaged and everything. And yet she doesn't have nothing and all of that and everything. She's, she doesn't have the job she had before. So she has to beg. She has to cry. She has to ridicule herself all over again. Go to his family all the time and beg and beg and beg. And then when she goes, they insult her again. And she's crying and she says, Mom, I can't take it anymore. I want to commit suicide. Look at what extent she has been violated. Was it not because she was a woman, she was vulnerable, she was probably desperate uh, for love or for companionship or for, I don't know what, maybe financial security, all of those things. So during these 16 days, we are supposed to choose because the theme for this year is, um, what was that again? Hi, Danny. How are you? Fine. How was sports? How was the walk? Where the walk? Fine, I'm tired. I'm just wrapping up now. There's no light. Yeah. Is that 150? Yeah, you can drink that, but I don't have. Orange the world. Phone, respond, prevent, and collect. Phone, respond, prevent, and collect. So you can choose what you want to do, you know, to contribute to the activism. Or you can do all. Oh, you, you, you just cannot sit quiet, both as a woman and as a man. As I was saying in a webinar that just ended on WellPost, when you violate a woman, you are violating the children, you are violating the community. So it is something that we all have to, I mean, stand up. We all have to just imagine for once, what if it was my mother? What if it was my sister? Am I going to sit and watch her violated? You have to be, for example, help her to get empowered. You know, sometimes eh, the best way to fight back or to push back or to stop the cycle is to give somebody, you know, like instead of giving them fish, give them a net so they can fish. Because sometimes women cannot leave the abusive relationship because they are living to go to where? They are living to do what? You know, so talk with them, teach them. If you are family and if you have the means, phone. Fund their business proposals, fund their little activities, fund, let them start something when they start. Gradually, gradually. Now, where I am today, can that fellow even stand like in front of the door of this office and talk to me anyhow? Can he do this? Can he say any can he even send me a text? He cannot. Why? Because I'm so empowered. I'm not even counting on him, even for the children. He knows that if he says today, I'm not more, I'm like, come on, okay, good, go. You're not God. And because I can do all of these things, I know that I'll be able to continue. So, well, go ahead. Stay with your conscience. Karma is a bitch. I can talk to him now. I can. But before could I? 10 years ago could I? 12 years ago could I? 15 years ago could I? So it is very important for us to empower um, our sisters, our mothers, you know, people who have mothers who have just been housewives their whole lives, if they have had the husbands who support them and who respect them and who don't violate them, good. But if not, and you're in a position now to empower your mom or your sister, please do it, especially if they're in a violent uh, relationship. Now, you yourself, you can also take those steps, you know, get to close to people who a dynamic like myself you know talk to us attend workshops think about things that you can do to economically empower yourself even if you stay in that home the man starts seeing you or whoever the woman starts seeing you empowered 
they start respecting they start knowing that hey i can't have her anyhow anymore i can't walk i can't i can't i can't break her i can't disrespect her i can't get to her because well she's so busy doing the things that she's doing she doesn't even have time for you i mean even if i were in a relationship now and we were married i'm not even going to care i mean you can do whatever you are doing i'm doing i'm busy i'm taking care of myself um i just don't have time for your shenanigans let me use that word so yes yeah, the first thing is important to think of funding now respond sometimes you need to stand up to these abusers you need to you cannot just fawn and you cannot just be pumping money and you cannot just be talking to them no sometimes you need to stand up you need to come there you need to say for example if you are the brother of a sister who is being violated you need to come and tell that man hey be very careful this woman you are violating today before she became your partner or your wife she was my sister she is still my sister she comes from a family you know we can beat you up we can lock you up we can take her away from you you better stop some families behave like once you have gone you are gone they don't want to see you again you know that our i don't know if i'll call it a cake or whatever thing we had like uh, as you go you go don't come back here again what is that are you selling property is it a car even if it's a car can you imagine saying that i was like i'm not i'm never going to say that anyway to anybody i have only boys but i'm not even going to encourage them to think that if they go and marry somebody's child it is forever and ever and they can do anything with no 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 i'll even talk to the girl i'm like hey if one day you feel slighted my first son is listening to me if one day you feel slighted disrespected come and talk to me and i'm even going to help you to get the hell out of there what take somebody's child because you think it's the weaker gender so you can just violate them and beat them or you know emotionally abuse them mentally psychologically no 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 so you if you have such a family please stop it it's not fair it has pushed a lot of people to their graves because they keep staying there because they want to bring honor to the family if they leave oh the family oh you have disgraced the family name you have embarrassed us oh my goodness how can you do this just such shame such embarrassment can you imagine our honor oh is it more than life even if they do what look in my case i committed adultery and so what so i'm speaking also to those families those siblings who chastise one of theirs because they want them to stay married or stay in a relationship just so that the family honor should be going on and stuff like that are you prepared to bury instead of responding and taking them out of that abusive situation look at barbara's family that lady the pastor's wife who was killed in america i mean she had been so violated and abused she even when she left she still wanted to go back and collect one document and when she went back even when the man was threatening she was the one calming her brother not to threaten the man in return and not to call the police immediately because what the heck why did she have to some people say oh she was planning to call the police on tuesday planning what 911 is available 24 7. so if she really wanted to get that man picked up she should have called that day after all they had a video so i'm like she was in such a fragile mindset i'm sure she had lost all self-confidence she just thought that the man could not harm her but she did not want to continue bringing dishonor to her family so she didn't want this thing to go viral in the end it went viral because well he went to her workplace and shot her eight times that means it was so premeditated he didn't just shoot once he shot when she even dropped down he continued to shoot why was he doing that it's because where well, he knew that oh, she's a woman what can she do and of course she's weak she's vulnerable she doesn't probably even have a gun so i can shoot and shoot and then whatever happens to me happens to me that was so unfortunate you know we don't want to kind of like blame anybody now but uh, families who are still alive if your daughter is in an abusive relationship and she cries out to you people or you even notice please respond don't say between man and woman no put your mouth for day what is that okay well you're gonna give her a befitting barrier right okay well so another thing we can do is prevent how can we prevent by talking 
that's why I said to myself today, where well, you will not get tired, Mark, you would seize all opportunity to talk, talk in all kinds of capacities. I started in the morning on TV as a volunteer for the Network for Solidarity, Hope and Empowerment. After that, I went to Plato for the official launch of the campaign, which is going to run uh, all around the country, maybe in five or six places. Um, Yaounde, Bamenda, Boya, Tiko, Bangem, I think, yeah. Dwala, Yaounde, Bamenda, Boya, Tiko, Bangem, six places or something like that. And uh, yeah, we have our WhatsApp group. We are really doing something. We are walking around and we are saying no to sexual violence, but the end message is no to all forms of violence. We don't need to violate each other to pass messages across. I've come a long way. I don't have that energy to even exchange words with somebody. Once I notice that you want to make like, ah, I'm off. I block, I move on. Simple. I don't have that energy. I don't want anybody to raise their voice at me or to write using foul language or to make like that condescending. No, 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 no. And I don't do that to another person. Because like the journalist said this morning, if we each see ourselves in the other person, we are not going to raise our hands. We are not going to raise our voice. We are not going to, you know, violate and all of that. So yes, prevention is very important. Actually, they say prevention is better than cure. So if we raise our voice, for example, to know that it's not because we used to hear that we girls are the weaker sex, which is not even true. Because when a woman wants to beat the man, there's no pity. She can even use a big piece of love, hit you well and proper. So let's not get to that point. Let's raise our children to know that violence doesn't solve nothing. Actually, it is ego that lets people to start being violent towards one another. Let's try to really cultivate, uh, what can I say, a culture of peace and not a culture of violence. And then the last thing that this year's um, campaign is calling us to do is to collect. Well, collect data, collect statistics, collect. When you go out and you're doing your campaigns, collect data. We were collecting data today collect because it is that data that is going to enable us to know if there has been any progress or not to know which area to focus more on to know which uh, which which campaigns and which activities to fund more and all of that because we're not only talking of funding on the individual level we are talking of funding on the collective level organizations and stuff like that so yeah it's very important if you are in a position where you can get involved in all of these areas that's good if you cannot well choose one of them and if you're a woman who is already in such a situation that you you really feel like you are being violated probably because of your gender then you have to take action stop staying there do not suffer in silence my organization is here hope for the abuse and the battered we talk with people we help them we you know give them ideas and if you really feel like i want to Ha, uh, um, get a divorce well i'm a lawyer so that's a good thing if you think like oh no i just want some psychological help psychosocial help um yeah and i work with partner organizations like the network for solidarity hope and empowerment um, founded by my big sister bell sonke um, so if you contact me just know that we are always going to work together we really do collaborate a lot and uh, <clears throat> i'm a volunteer for her campaign to end sexual violence and rape for the next um, 16 or so days, we are going to be having different activities in Douala. And yeah, for all other forms of violence and everything, you can reach us, you can reach her. Um, I put some links there. What did I put there? Um, the email and call, what's up? And I say we should each try to do something. And if we are going through something, we should not suffer in silence. And um, yeah, if we have a message, we want the world to know. We can each share on our own platforms. Our walls, our social media handles should not only be there to gossip, run our mouths and be condemning people, criticizing their choices in life. Somebody told me the other day my dressing was indecent. I didn't even ask, you know. I'm like, why even go and be having those kind of opinions over people's choices now? If it doesn't really affect you, what's your problem then? Let's stop. You don't know. You can bring somebody down, make somebody, you know, get into a depression because of all those judgmental comments and all of those things. Let's stop that. Let's really stop it. Anyway, that's for me, and that's what I wanted to share today. I was like, yeah, before I go home, let me at least share a message on my own platform. 
as much as I wanted to stop, as much as once in a while, I can still come back and um, share this with you guys. I want to thank those who um, joined me. It's been a very long day for me. I can't wait to just go home and have a bath. I hope that my client is really going to postpone. I don't know what I'm going to be talking with them if they do reach out. Okay, well, we thank God, right? Thank you so much, everybody. Please take care of yourself and um, do not be a perpetrator of violence. And if you're a victim, do not suffer in silence. And if you're, if you're a survivor, please speak up. You don't know who can be helped by your own story. God bless us all.